is when the truth movement starts coming together, as I've found for the past few years, it's like herding cats because everybody, nearly everybody that comes to the truth movement recently, the new, the new first, the visionaries and the first responders, as Malcolm Gladwell wrote in his book Blink, they're all independent. We're all our own person. We think for ourselves. We've probably been beat up and abused and, and not thought of. We were very smart growing up, and so we had to think for ourselves. We had to fight for ourselves. We had to build up our own life for ourselves. But then we began to learn. We began to learn the secrets of the universe. We began to learn that the earth may be flat. We began to learn that there's GMOs in our food. We began to learn that the vaccines were had toxicity causing our children to get sick. We learned that 9-11 wasn't just an inside job. It was the beginning of World War III. We learned that the Jesuits control the White House. In fact, the White House is named after Andrew White. We learned many, many things, and then we look up and we see geoengineering, which has gotten even more intense. And now we've learned about lasers being attacking everywhere and we're learning about steering the weather to cause massive hurricanes and flooding like in North Carolina where they're having another we're having a new mosquito epidemic it's a world gone wild and it's a world gone really crazy but we have to come to our own senses about how we can deal with this and so what I chose to do was get back to nature nature is a healer nature can bring us back to life so I encourage all of you even if you're living in the cities to keep searching keep finding your light and you will find the angels the archons the creator being will come to your assistance once you've woken up and started on your path of enlightenment to your own self and one word of caution folks I've learned over time is stop using the word they they won't get it or he won't get it or she won't get it or whatever because you are early responders you're the first responders that are beginning to understand the depth of the mess we're in you're beginning to understand that they're spraying us like bugs causing all sorts of aluminum and barium and toxicity that goes into our soil there's no such thing as organic foods anymore folks they won't even tell us what's in our foods but you all know all this so how do you deal with it well I dealt with it by going to the country checking out and then coming back out once I came back with more knowledge because with this knowledge and what you've learned and knowing where the ledge is now you have to share now this is the hard work this is the action item out of spiritual development the action item is having to put yourself out there and become a tool for the betterment and the greater good of all a tool to share the dark news with others and you being the light and by you shining your light much brighter and the angels and the archons and the creators will be helping you you others will be able to see their path better because we need numbers we need to educate we need to alert and we need to inform and you have taken up the choice of being curious enough and being having the temerity, having the guts, having the intense little fortitude, having the courage to look at this darkness, this ugliness, the world that we have learned is a big lie and you've learned everything is a lie. Nothing is true. And how do you deal with that in a very insecure, airy place where there's no grounding anymore? We don't know what's going to happen next because these powers that have been in control for not hundreds but thousands of years have taken control of the world. And they want to set the world on fire as part of their M.O. Well, what can we do about it? But we can shine our light into the darkness. We can be the watchers. We can step up and be the David against the Goliath and say, Not on my watch, sir. Not on my watch, ma'am. Are you going to deceive my children or vaccinate my children or pollute the world like you're doing or kill the sentient beings all around the world for your old domination prospects of Agenda 21, Agenda 30, Agenda 2045, transhumanism, doing all our emails. It has to stop. And the term in Spanish is ya basta. It stops with me. And so that's what I decided. I decided that my life wasn't as important as the life of all beings and all future beings. The Iroquois Indians in the United States who lived on these lands for tens of thousands of years without harming anyone except for what they needed to live, they'd, they'd live their life for seven generations in the future. It's called sacrificing to the sacred. And that's what I've chosen to do with my life, even though it's cost me a ton of friends. It's cost me my family. And we're family coming together, and we should be enjoying each other's company and not bringing up doom and gloom subjects, Jamie. 
Well, when are you supposed to bring them up? How often do you get to see your families? How often do you get the chance to talk about these subjects with others who don't want to hear it, who don't want their bread and circuses lives destroyed, who don't want to hear the negative news because they don't want to be down, who are just trying to make it through the day because they can't even make a living trying to survive in this crazy trumped up world of, of trillions of dollars of massive debt on top of the abomination of all the bombing going on before we got bushwhacked. It's all theater, folks, and you're waking up to being inside the theater, and then they pull back the curtain, as uh, uh, Frank Zappa said, and you, they show you the brick wall. Well, it's full disclosure now. If people can't see the geoengineering going on, I'm sorry, but we need to let them go. We need to reach out to those on the fringe. We need to reach out to those who are just starting to learn. We need to reach out and suggest and try and offerings. So what I suggestion I make to you all is if this is any benefit to you to get out of the loneliness and help you awake is make it an offering to people. Don't tell them this is the truth. Don't tell them the earth is flat. Don't tell them they need to not vaccinate their children. Just offer them information. Here's a website. Here's a book. Here's some articles I just read. Maybe you will find some information useful to yourself. And here's why I'm saying this is because you're the seeds, folks. You're the seeds of everything that's going to grow from here. This is the winter of compost. In the cycle of life, this is the winter time. And we are in destruction. We are in Shiva. We're in the Pluto blowing things up so the new creations can come. And we're the seeds of this new creation. So instead of what you don't want, anti-war, anti-vaccine, anti-this and that, we need to get pro. Probiotics means pro-life. Antibiotics means anti-life. Guess what they give you? Antibiotics. Anybody ever think of that? They don't want our souls to rise. They don't want us to come together and organize. They don't want us to become enlightened beings because we're so powerful. They have to have kept us in the dark like mushrooms and shit on us until they're ready to pick us off like the Georgia Guidestones or prophesizing. That's saying they want a 95% reduction in all life. And they put it in the finest granite stone in the United States outside Atlanta, Georgia. And we all know they have serious intention and they're following through. Well, how do you step up and deal with such a beast? And the answer is always the same, folks. If you're eating an elephant, you start with one bite at a time. And we've been given consciousness to be bring this awareness. Do you remember the Mayan calendar of December 21st, 2012? The Mayan calendar was written in stone 5,000 years ago that was predicting these exact times when the consciousness would be going from our right hemisphere, or left hemisphere brain to our right, crossing the Great Rift, the Great Milky Way above as we're traversing on Earth, but also inside our consciousness. And this is why we're all available on the Internet and books and whatnot to download this information, to learn the great truths of the ancients, to figure out what the ancient meanings were and the hieroglyphs on the sides of pyramids that have lasted tens of thousands of years where we store our knowledge on thumb drives. It's very important work what you're doing here, folks. You're downloading your learning. It can eat you up. It can cost you your family. It cost me my marriage. I had to make a decision. Do I move back to the bling world and satisfy the wife and give her what she wanted because the country life just wasn't for her. It's too hard to work. She wanted the nails and the bread and circus. Or do I stay true to myself, costing me a marriage, costing me friends, costing me income, walking away from a, a really good income and making a lot of money. It didn't matter anymore because the future of my child was in jeopardy. The future of all children are in jeopardy. The future of all life is in jeopardy. And if you're not stepping up now, you will not be rewarded in your karma in the future because karma means action. You can't just download this information, folks, and wallow in the pity of the world today. You have to get out and act, and that's where the hopium comes from. The hopium comes from action is putting yourself out there, knowing that you are a spiritual being, have a physical experience, and they cannot destroy you. And shining your light, learning what your light source is, being the Chiron of the wounded healer who don't want others to heal, having compassion for the others, having empathy for others. What did Gandhi do? He and his fellow Indians, they marched against the British and they were caned. They were knocked down until the British learned and understood that their hearts could no longer strike another fellow human being. It was just inhumane. Well, guess what, folks? That's our work today. Our souls came here to fight this monstrous battle. Our souls came here to be the change that has to be. 
but we're not going to see the fruits of our labors. We're going to we're the seeds of all that's going to come from here. So we need to learn our lessons well. We need to learn the nuts and the bolts of the darkness, how it works, who is behind it, and we need to bring it to light. And we need not to blame others and say they don't get it or talk about the current screen that has this president or that name or this judge or whatever. And everybody talks about it because it's bread and circuses and they own the media. That's why they call it TV programming. And you think about it for a sec. You've got 320 million people in the United States, not America, United States, that all look at a screen and they all talk about whatever they see on the screen because it's all the same knowledge or all the same input coming into everybody's brains. And we all give our energy over to talk about Trump or Obama or whoever the next puppet show is. And we think we give them all our power. This person we're never going to meet, we're never going to know, we're talking about them all the time, giving away our energy, and so am I, so I'm stopping right now. So it's up to each one of us to find our soul force, our soul purpose, to create positivity, as my buddy, new buddy Jensen Curtis, who contacted me recently and was watching my videos, said. Create positivity, create the change you wish to see, but also do it in a way that resonates with your own self in your own way. This is where the creativity comes in. We have to create a new world. We have to create new languages. We don't say hell to everybody, hello, or we don't cast spells in school, or we don't say we're sane and then we're insane for being in our sanity. It's all language that we languish in, and the definition is from the deaf Phoenicians. They've been, it's, by, or it's by hearing and by sound. So we get to create a whole new world of what we want to see. We have to become conservationists. We have to become stewards. We have to become caring about all our lives. But what this is forcing us to do is lift our heads and look in much greater time horizons, just like the flat earth theory is. It makes us look into 5,000 years of history. It makes us look into the vast cosmos about a much greater time frame than most of us have even considered or even known about. It makes us look into the Native American histories. It makes us look into the African history, which we're now learning in the United States alone. They were here 46,000 years ago before the Native Americans were. Unbelievable knowledge we're downloading right now, while at the same time, the clamps are coming down on the world on top of us. And we're seeing that happen over and over just as we're shining our light brighter. Now, who's going to win? We will. And the sole reason is, as Martin Luther King says, hate cannot conquer hate. Only love can conquer hate. Plus, we are spiritual beings having a physical experience. And all you that listen to the King James Bible, please read the other Bibles because they talk about reincarnation. They talk about the kingdom of God being inside of you. We have many, many more lifetimes, folks. We've been here before, but we're on the ascension. The darkness that's coming at us right now is on the descension. They're falling from grace from the enlightened of the Golden Age and the Iron Age and the Bronze Age, but they have the technology and the knowledge and the evil to do it. So on their way down, they're creating hell on earth. They're terraforming earth for their own likeness and for their own reasons and for their own existence, not caring about us because we're on the way up. But we're the light beings. We're on the ascension to the Aquarian Age. The Aquarian Age means of the mind, but it's Saturnian. It's very, very tough lessons learned. It's going to get harder, folks. I wish I could say it's going to get all better because we want it to. But here's what I want to leave you with. When you speak out, when you speak your truth, when you speak with, when you act with right action, you need to not pay attention so much to the echo. Did they get it? Did they hear me? Are they understanding? But pay attention to your message. Did I speak in the right truth? Did I speak in the right way? Did I get the right message out? So the control is always in your power. And they will hear it when they're ready, but you are planting seeds. So fellow seed planters, I honor the truth movement. I honor all of you with respect and love. Please share your stories about your awakening too. It is lonely, but know you're not alone. You're with us all in peace and love.